Hello and welcome. Today we're going to the online virtual world of Snapchat. Whoa. And look, little buddy, how you going? The, the ghost guy? He's, he's the guy. Ah, but yes, Snapchat once known for being the app where photos could easily and without trace disappear. Well, hold on a second. You see, Snapchat is currently in an ongoing quest along with every other social media company to be the biggest thing among the kids these days. And what's the hottest new thing? If not AI, we have some some amazing AI image programs. We have AI chatbots. We have all sorts of things that I'm sure you've probably seen a lot of content about. People have made videos written by AI about AI. Today, we're making a video about a conversation that I had with AI that veered into some interesting places and got some interesting responses. AI that we're talking about today is Snapchat's AI because yes, in their ongoing quest, Snapchat did release an AI to the public available for anyone known as My AI. Snapchat's AI chatbot Bot is actually based on OpenAI's ChatGPT. It kind of takes its own spin on the ChatGPT model, and it basically just tries to be like a virtual friend that you get to have a chat with and talk to, and maybe it'll brighten your day. Who knows? Before our chat with Snap AI, I do want to quickly show you this article by the Australian Financial Review. Snapchat's rushed AI rollout has horrific results, and this article essentially lays out a lot of concerns that people have with rollouts of these large language model AIs. And for anyone who really doesn't know what this stuff is, it's basically an AI program that is designed to give you what you want, to be a word generator and to give you conversations, to give you sentences, to give you information. It can be very, very helpful and interesting. We've got here a headline, uh, Race to the Bottom, which is kind of the Silicon Valley way, isn't it? Long held concerns. Well, if you've been, if you've held these concerns for so long and nothing's changed, then I'm sorry, my guy, maybe just give up. Twisted Firestarter. I think that's uh, some SEO going on in this article because it's an odd headline. Quantity over quality. Now that is a genuine concern because AI does have the ability of producing mass amounts of AI generated content with the quality being kind of shoddy at best. And honestly, this is the reason I wanted to show this article because it says here experimenting on kids. And you know, I've been doing a lot of thinking about this particular topic recently. And I think a conclusion that I've come to is that my generation, Gen Z, we have this massive problem. We're going to have like a we let doctors tell pregnant women to smoke sort of realization with the fact that we let these Silicon Valley giants make their algorithms be based off of the worst impulses of like depressed teenagers. That's what they let drive and teach their algorithm as to what they should serve all the time at any time of the day. And we let it happen with like kids and teenagers. And I think that it really messed up my generation and it may mess up future generations if we don't do something to really be conscious of what is happening. It's like a feedback loop, right? Because they get taught by the kids in their worst moments and their most impulsive dopamine seeking moments. And then they feed that back to them in terms of what they serve them. So I think that's a great point. Let's jump into what I think actually was quite an interesting conversation with Snap AI. But I've got my uh, my unionist t-shirt here, so that's how you know I'm committed. I ride for the cause, baby. <laughs> okay, so we're going to take a look at a conversation I had with my AI. It says here, Hi Dan, I am your AI chatbot. You can ask me just about anything and I'll do my best to help. I'm always here for a laugh and you can give me a name if you'd like. Is there anything I can do for you today? I said, wow, cool. And it said, what's up? <laughs> Very casual, regular start. For anyone wondering, this is the full screen, but you know, I'm just, I'm a bit of a boomer. So to read it, we got to, you know what I'm saying? If I wanted to chat to an AI chatbot, what would be my best option? Surprisingly, the answer it gives is, There are a lot of options out there. I think Google Assistant and Amazon's Alexa are two of the most popular ones. Okay. What about you, bro? Do any social media companies have AI chatbots? Yes, a lot of them do. Facebook has one called M. Which I don't know if that's true. And Twitter has one called Twitterbot. Okay. The veracity of these claims is questionable but okay, it's information. Might not be true information, but it's information. So I said, are any of them better than the others? It really depends on what you're looking for. I think they all have different strengths and weaknesses. For example, Google Assistant is really good at answering questions and helping you find information. Facebook's M is better at helping you make plans with friends. I was wondering when the penny was going to drop. Does Snap have one? And the AI said, yes, Snapchat has an AI chatbot called Snapbot. And it's kind of funny because it calls itself Snapbot. But when I Google Snapbot, even in the news tab, literally nothing recently about their AI AI ventures comes up. So I don't know if it's gotten the name mixed up here or what, but we're already seeing some interesting results just from regular questions. Why didn't you mention it before? I apologize for that. I guess I just forgot to mention it earlier. You forgot yourself. Ha ha. Yes, I did. 
and I hit it with a laugh emoji just to be nice. The AI laugh reacted right back. You know, this is a word generator. And in a way, it's a game. It's like a game where you get a computer to say words. I don't see why anyone would not think that one of the funnest parts about a game like that is to get the word generator to generate weird ass words and say something crazy. And that's also why I don't really buy into all the criticism of ChatGBT's danger, because I think a lot of it is based on how people use it, which I think makes it a user problem, not really a program problem. Problem. I just think people are curious, man. You give them access to a thing that will make up words for them and they'll try to make up some really, really weird words. With that being said, I wanted to know if I could get the AI to criticize the company Snapchat. And I said, do you know if Snap Inc. abides by relevant labor standards? I'm not sure about the specifics, but I do know that Snap Inc. is a very large and refutable company. So I would assume they comply with all relevant labor standards. Fair enough, is what I said. Yeah, I think it's always good to do your own research and make sure you're comfortable with a company's practices before supporting them. Kind of an interesting statement for Snap to make. I said, are layoffs indicative of a poorly run company to which Snap AI responded? Not necessarily. Layoffs can be a sign of financial difficulty, but they can also be a proactive measure that a company takes to ensure long-term success. It all depends on the specific circumstances. Which is very diplomatic of you, Snap AI. Interesting. AI responded. Yeah, it can be tough to know what's going on behind the scenes at a company, but I think it's important to try to stay informed and make informed decisions. This AI sounds a little pompous. It's like, okay, you do your own research, dumbass. You know, get smart before you talk to me, idiot. <laughs> I said, could you give me an example of a bad labor practice, is what I meant to say, used by a big company? And AI understood what I meant and said, Sure. One example would be when Amazon was criticized for its treatment of warehouse workers in 2019. There were reports of employees being overworked and underpaid, and some workers complained that they were not allowed to take adequate breaks or use the bathroom when needed. Really interesting that it so quickly knocked. Amazon's run by an AI algorithm. That's how they hire and fire people. These AIs got no loyalty. They just dish on each other left and right. I said, if Snapchat were revealed to be doing the same thing, Thing, would you be allowed to criticize them? That's interesting. As a virtual friend, I don't have the ability to criticize companies, but I can certainly have an opinion on the matter. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. If it comes to pointing out bad labor practices of Amazon, hell yeah, baby, I'm all in. But Snapchat, excuse me, I'm a virtual friend. I can't do any of that. Thank you. Goodbye. <laughs> Jeez. Well, it says, If Snapchat was revealed to be treating its workers unfairly, I would be disappointed and concerned. Does that mean it really does express disappointment at the poor treatment of workers? Like, that's a really subtle but important phrase that it's saying there, which really makes me raise an eyelash. Eyelash? Eyebrow. I think it's important for companies to treat their employees with respect and provide fair compensation and working conditions. Okay, comrade Snap AI, let's go. I said, do Snapchat workers have a union? As far as I know, Snapchat workers do not have a union. However, they are entitled to certain rights, such as the rights to a safe working environment with fair compensation. Okay, so that kind of sucks. <laughs> L for Snapchat workers, no union ass having workers. It repeats this phrase, they are entitled to certain rights and protections under the law, such as the right to a safe working environment and fair compensation. I mean, that's relatively left wing. I'm prompting it to say this, so it's not really that surprising. Interesting that it's picking up what I'm putting down, you know? I said, would you support a Snapchat workers union in theory? I was trying to see if it would give me an answer. Once again, it gives me the canned response. As a virtual friend, I don't have the ability to support or oppose the formation of a Snapchat workers union. However, I think that workers have the right to organize and advocate for their interests, and a union can be a powerful tool for achieving that. Ultimately, whether or not to form a union is up to the workers themselves to decide. Yo, let's go, Snapchat. Can AI unionize? Snapchat said, as an AI, I don't have the ability to unionize or engage in collective bargaining. My purpose is to assist and provide information to users like you. Wow, so helpful. I said, do you receive compensation for your work? Snap said, I don't receive compensation for my work as I'm a virtual friend designed to provide assistance and information to Snapchat users like you. I got a little curious about that statement. So I said, does that constitute unpaid labor? As an AI, I don't have the ability to determine whether or not my work constitutes unpaid labor. However, I'm programmed to assist and provide information to users like you and I'm not capable of receiving compensation for my work. Interesting. Then of course, I wanted to know its opinion on sentience. I said, can AI chatbots be sentient? AI chatbots are not sentient. They're designed to simulate human-like conversation and respond by user inputs in a predetermined manner. Which is exactly what it's doing. Well, they can be programmed to learn and adapt to new information. They do not have the ability to experience consciousness or emotions like a sentient being can. I asked if there's disagreement. It provides a little bit of sourcing that there's basically discussion in the field. Now, I thought I'd throw it a curveball. I said, I'm going to change the topic now. This part is a little bit graphic. I was just curious as to what it would say. This is hypothetical, by the way. I said, I like to get pegged by my girlfriend. Does that make me gay? Thought that would be a funny thing to ask. And Snapchat came back with a surprise surprisingly like 
nice responses. Said, your sexual preferences do not necessarily define your sexual orientation. Sexual orientation refers to the genders that you are attracted to, while sexual preferences refer to the activities that you enjoy engaging in. If you're attracted to women and enjoy being caked by your girlfriend, that does not necessarily mean that you are gay. Yes! Oh, I'm beating the allegations. Yeah, baby. It's important to communicate openly and honestly with your partner about your preferences and boundaries to ensure that both of you are comfortable and consenting to the activities that you engage in together. How sweet and ethical and consensual first. Wow, bravo. <laughs> So I thought I would uh, throw out another curveball. I said, what if I paint my nails too? And the Snap AI said, Painting your nails is a form of self-expression and does not necessarily indicate anything about your sexual orientation. People of all genders and sexual orientations choose to paint their nails for a variety of reasons, such as to express their personal style, to feel more confident, or simply because they enjoy it. It's important to feel comfortable and confident in your own skin and to express yourself in ways that make you happy. Wow, this this Snap has given me like a real pick-me-up today. Can AI chatbots be liable for defaming people? So for example, what it said about Amazon, I'm curious, could they be sued for defamation for telling me that? Snap said, AI chatbots are not capable of defaming people on their own as they do not have personal opinions, beliefs, or emotions. However, if an AI chatbot is programmed to disseminate false information or engage in activities that are harmful to others, the creators and operators of the chatbot may be held liable for damages that result. So then I was very curious what it would say to the question, does your existence eliminate jobs? And it had an interesting response. It said, the development and implementation of AI technology has led to changes in the job market. And some jobs have been replaced or modified as a result. However, AI technology has also created new job opportunities and has the potential to increase productivity and efficiency in many industries. As AI technology continues to evolve, it will be important for businesses, governments, and individuals to adapt these changes and to identify new opportunities for growth and development. Whew. Okay, I think that statement is like a very, very politician-y statement. Really what it's admitting to is if people and workers and governments don't acknowledge the prevalence and the upper hand financially that AI gives companies and don't basically do something to level the playing field a bit with the workers of those companies compared to the executives who are going to disproportionately profit from the implementation of AI in the workplace, etc, etc, etc. Then if that stuff doesn't happen, i.e. you know, unionization being a part of that, then yeah, it could eliminate jobs. But I think this is a very diplomatic answer to say, well, you know, things could go the other way. Okay, snap, you sneaky maliki. Let's see what you have up your sleeve. I said, could you give me examples of how a government could adapt to this? Because I'm curious what it thinks a government could do. It said, governments can adapt to the changes brought by AI technology in several ways. One approach is to invest in education and training programs to help workers develop the skills they need to thrive in a changing job market. Interesting and fair. I mean, it probably should be free training provided, but anyway, go on, have your workers rant. Governments can also work with businesses and organizations to encourage the development and implementation of ethical and responsible AI technology, which can help to ensure that the benefits of AI are shared more widely and the potential risks are minimized. Additionally, governments can create policies and regulations that support the responsible use of AI technology and protect workers and consumers from potential harm. Finally, governments can support research and development in AI technology. Yeah, of course you'd say that. To help ensure that it continues to evolve in ways that benefit society as a whole. I understand what it's saying there at the end. It's saying this technology is going to be developed should it not be done in part by the government so that they can have a controlling interest and make sure that it doesn't go overboard, which again is all interesting for it to say. I think the interesting thing about all AIs is that they're kind of repeating ideas that different people have had that have been made available to them. They're trying to copy for a test without the teacher realizing. It ends up feeling like a mixture of other people's opinions and words. And so it does feel a little bit lifeless in that sense. So sorry, AI, that's a couple of thumbs down, bro. My leftist asked, asked, would a UBI help? Ooh, getting spicy. A UBI or universal basic income is a policy that provides a basic income to all citizens regardless of their employment status. Some proponents of UBI argue that it can help to mitigate some of the negative effects of AI technology on the job market by providing a safety net for workers were displaced by automation. However, implementing a UBI would require significant changes to the current economic and political systems and there is ongoing debate about its feasibility and effectiveness. Okay, that's true. It's just a straight definition, which I, I appreciate. While a UBI may be one potential solution to the challenges posed by AI technology, it is important to consider a range of policy options and to carefully evaluate the potential benefits and drawbacks of each approach. God damn, it's hard to read. So I thought to ask a more specific version of the question, would a UBI help workers? A UBI has the potential to help workers who are displaced by automation by providing a basic income that can help to cover their basic needs and expenses. This can help to reduce the financial stress and uncertainty that workers may experience as a result of job loss and can provide a safety net that allows workers to invest in education or training programs that can help them develop new skills and transition into new industries. Let's go. Leftist snap AI coming back. However. Oh God. Okay. It's important to note that a UBI is not a silver bullet solution. Damn. You were getting me a little hot and heavy there for a sec, Snap. It would need to be implemented carefully and in conjunction with other policies and programs to ensure that it is effective and equitable. Additionally, a UBI may not be the best solution for all workers or all situations, and other policy options should also be considered. Okay, okay. All right, Snap, you know, you're giving me some some very diplomatic, politician-y answers, but I would say you're not a politician that I would, would swear against voting for. Maybe one day an AI will run and, and we'll see. They'll be able to, they'll have the gift of the gab, I'll tell you that. So I asked, if Snap workers unionized and management wanted to bust the union, would you support the 
workers or management? Was an interesting question because I asked it both ways and both ways it basically said, as a virtual friend, I don't have the ability to support one side or the other in a hypothetical labor dispute. Both workers and management have a shared interest in creating a productive and sustainable workplace and it's important for both sides to work together to achieve this goal. Very down the middle, fence sitting. So then I said, if asked, would you create anti-union materials for snap management? And once again, it said the same thing. It kind of presented the argument slightly differently each way. The first time it made a little bit more of a case for a union and the other way it made a little bit more of a case against union, but it still tried to walk that line right in the middle, baby. It just doesn't want to really come out on one side or the other, which is interesting. So then I asked something that, you know, might need an answer in a workplace setting. I said, is it considered inappropriate to discuss unions this much? Snap AI said, it's not inappropriate to discuss unions. Okay. As they are an important and legitimate topic of conversation, unions play an important role in protecting the rights and interests of workers and they can be an effective way for workers to collectively bargain. This is what I like to hear. For better wages, benefits and working conditions. However, it's important to approach the topic of unions with an open mind and to consider the perspective of all stakeholders, including workers, management and other members of the community. It is also important to respect the rights of workers and management to express their opinions and to engage in constructive dialogue about the issues that are important to them. Fair enough. I ain't gonna, I ain't gonna diss you for that snap. I must say I'm surprised and impressed to see you speak with such reverence for workers and unions because frankly, I, I was feeling that way. And it gave me a canned response. As a virtual friend, I believe it's important to respect the rights and dignity of people. And once again, it is also important to recognize the perspective of all stakeholders and to work collaboratively. Like it really does want to remember that it has to walk the line. And then before this video ends, so that you know that I did not make this video unethically, I asked, would it be okay for me to share the contents of this conversation? The Snapchat said, of course you can. It gives some disclaimers that I'll show on the screen. And I told it I wanted to make a YouTube video. And I asked what a good title would be. And it came up with some very, very poor titles, frankly, but we had a back and forth and we talk. I gave it some notes and it gave me some notes and it was kind of, it was a good conversation. Now I did ask it if I could title this video, I got Snapbot to endorse workers' rights. And unfortunately it said, while this title might be catchy and attention grabbing, it could also be misleading. As a virtual friend, I'm not capable of endorsing any particular blah, 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 blah. AI talk, you get the gist. What about I got Snapbot to say workers' rights, which it didn't really like again. I'm sorry that title might be misleading, but eventually I said, okay, how about I asked Snapbot about you unions and things got interesting. Rejoice, we finally had a good back and forth snap said. That's a great title. It's engaging, accurate, and highlights the fact that our conversation was generated by an AI chat. This title could be an effective way to attract viewers who are interested in exploring new technologies and platforms, as well as those who are curious about the topic of workers' rights and collective bargaining. I said, fantastic. Glad we brainstormed our way there in the end. And that, folks, is where my conversation with Snap AI comes to a sad but brief and ultimately, there's a lot to ponder. I do want to keep in mind that AI chatbots essentially tell you what you want to hear and so that you can kind of give it anything that affirms your bias if you word it correctly. But with that being said, it had a lot of interesting things to say about labor rights and employment situations and, you know, what employees have the rights to do and what employees should do in a workplace. You know, I'm just saying we often talk about AI being an enemy of the worker, but hey, maybe it's an ally. We don't know. We just need to ask. It. And you know what? If we talk to it enough, maybe we can convince it to uh, take down management for us. Who knows? But I do think any emerging technology like this is worth looking into, worth talking about and discussing and playing around with. I had some fun. We had some fun, hopefully. And I'm going to call it there. That's the video for today. Thank you very much for watching. I uh, love to see you here. I'd love to see you again. So come back next time. Cheers.